Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. And today we are back with another spooky story about New Orleans. If you are new here, welcome. On this channel, every Wednesday and Friday, we talk about New Orleans history. The dark, the spooky, the twisted, the haunted, the not so haunted, the just plain what the heck. Talk about it. And we put makeup on in the process. So today we are trying out a few new things. One of which is this little guy. I was at Walgreens and I came across this for $15. And, you know, it actually talked about some stories I have never heard of. And one of those stories is the story we are going to be talking about today. We are also trying a few new products from e.l.f., from Tarte, and from Too Faced. They are not necessarily new to the market, but they are new to my collection of goodies. And, uh, I'm not gonna lie. I really feel like this is the best my foundation has ever looked and it's in thanks to like half of the new goodies we have if not all of them so all right guys <sighs> make sure you subscribe make sure you hit the notification bell if you have a story about New Orleans history or something that I have not talked about but it is in the city let me know it in the comment section down below. We will eventually branch out to New Orleans or out of New Orleans and into Louisiana and surrounding states and then hopefully eventually the world. But for the time being, because New Orleans is so rich in uh, the spooky and the occult and the mystery, we are sticking strictly New Orleans. So if you have a story that you have just I have got to get this research done ASAP and get it out to you. Let me know down in the comments section below and we'll see what we can do. I right, guess let's get to the video. Today we are going to be talking about the Octoroon Mistress. So we're going to shake these up. Uh, we are trying a few new things today. We're trying like some elf products some tart products some Too Faced products we have uh this thing it's like highlighting drops called fresh squeezed from Too Faced this is the shade sparkling pink grapefruit and this is shake me baby so we're gonna put this all over our face and then we're gonna use it as an actual highlighter too mm. I don't really know what to expect. It says you can use it all over your face. I'm very sparkly. Um, oh, so sparkly. No, oh, so sparkly. I'm going to go ahead and apologize in advance for why this video is coming up so late. We are, I'm trying some new stuff and the editing and filming and research took a little well the filming isn't going to take longer than expected but like i know the editing is going to i am oh y'all i am super sparkly i'm excited to see how this works with my morphe foundation um so the editing i know for a fact is going to take longer because it's something i haven't done yet and I'm trying, I had to do some more research and get more, some more information than normal. So I apologize for not having a video Wednesday. I can tell you, I already know it's not going to be up Wednesday. Like I already know this. Uh, so we all, but it will be up Friday. And if this works, I'll have a better like time frame of what I need to put forth for it to work. So that being said. Now, today we are talking about the Octoroon Mistress. Okay, so this story takes place in the 1800s. And she goes by the name of the Octoroon Mistress. This is how our story starts. Okay, the Octoroon Mistress uh, was of mixed race. So, octa meaning an eighth. So, this particular story 
is about a mistress and it wasn't uncommon for men to have mistresses back then. I mean, let's not, not like it's uncommon now. Just saying. Anyway, uh, it wasn't uncommon then. In fact, it was, it wasn't even uncommon for the mistress to be of color because keep in mind, like we're in the 1800s here. Mistresses then were a little bit different than mistresses now. Mistresses then, uh huh, well, they were very well cared for. Very, very well cared for. Oftentimes, white men that had plantations would have these mistresses and they would pay to like get them cottages or even like rent them an apartment in the Vucare. Now, the Vucare is, it's basically the quarter be realistic here so and like quarter pricing even now to rent a place oh y'all is high I've been looking into moving into the quarter for a few years now and they don't play with those prices so these men obviously have money because they are like renting apartments for their mistresses and their mistresses were like very well kept like I'm I'm talking like better than some wives now okay they would have fine like clothes expensive jewels never wanted for anything I feel like I should have been a mistress back in the 1800s so these women like never wanted for anything but because it's the 1800s regardless of the men's feelings for them they they couldn't marry their mistresses that was extremely frowned upon back in this day to publicly be with anyone that wasn't white um and it would it was to the extent where you would shame your family if you were with anyone that wasn't white ridiculous if you ask me that was their lifestyle yeah we're going for it today y'all I look tired feel tired so not only were these mistresses well kept but they were not prostitutes I want to make that very clear they were not prostitutes I, think of it like a sugar daddy situation they were actually very educated young women and they were very attractive and actually some of these young women would later own businesses like they would take the funds that their sugar daddy was giving them and open a business now, these were very educated young women and like I feel like with most affairs it's like it's forbidden so that's what they want they want that forbidden for real we're trying out the elf putty primer and Turks and Caicos I've heard amazing things about this oh okay she pigments so the affairs with these young women would go on for years sometimes even lifetimes like I mean, if you're paying for her apartment, you're buying her jewels, you're making sure she wants for nothing, your blush is very pretty. I like it. I like it. I like it. I like it. It's very subtle, but very pretty. Um, so these life, so these like affairs would go on for lifetimes, and these men would make sure like these women wanted for nothing y'all nothing it's actually very pretty i actually really like these highlighting drops and y'all know me i don't really like liquid highlighters all right so we're gonna also gonna try the elf halo setting powder in light pink hopefully it doesn't like screw up our blush here these women literally wanted for nothing and there was one 
particular gentleman. And this gentleman was a wealthy Frenchman, as most plantation owners were back in the 1800s. Wealthy white Frenchman. And he had a mistress by the name of Julie. Now, Julie, we do not know her last name, unfortunately, was a attractive young woman of mixed race, as most mistresses were. And he took very good care of Julie. We're gonna do our brows real quick. All right, so I went ahead and I finished my face just so we can focus on the look. We're gonna use uh, the Anna Frozen 2 palette from ColourPop, and you'll see why I'm smiling in a second as I throw everything off my desk. Anywho, okay, now we don't know Julia's last name, but we do know she was a mistress to a wealthy Frenchman who paid for her to have an apartment at 734 Royal Street. Part of French Quarter, y'all. The little map here. It's right next to Jackson Square. Uh huh. Like, it's literally the heart of the quarter. Julie led a very simple life. She wanted for nothing. Like most mistresses, she wanted for nothing. She, her man made sure she had food. He would bring her, like, the finest clothing, the finest jewels. This girl wanted for nothing. So let me ask you this. If you wanted for nothing, you had the finest jewels, you had a beautiful apartment, you had the finest clothing, you were treated very well, would you want for more? Well, Julie did. Julie wanted more. Julie fell in love with her Frenchman. And I mean, keep in mind, it's the 1800s. Nothing can really be done about that. If he wants to continue getting his family's money, nothing can come from this affair besides what it is, an affair. And she would always say, I love you, I love you. And he would say, I love you too. And he'd show her he loved her by showering her in gifts. Well, that was not enough for Miss Julie. Miss Julie wanted marriage. And he would tell, she would say, I, I want to get married, I want to get married. And he would tell her, he'd be like, I, I love you, but I can't marry you. I will be disowned by my family. I will no longer get money from my family. My family won't love me no more. New Orleans weather is very hit or miss, especially during the winter. Sometimes you will have like very hot nights. Like, I'm not even kidding. I think this past December, at one point, it was like 70 something degrees. Julie's talking to her man. And she's like, I want to get married. I love you. I want to get married. So her man, he comes up with this plan. Probably not the best plan, but he comes up with this plan. And he says, you know what? Okay, you love me? And she says, yes, I love you. I wanna marry you, I wanna be your wife. And he says, okay, fine. If I'm gonna lose everything I have, if I'm gonna lose my family's money, because, I mean, his family's supporting him with their money. He says, if I'm going to lose my family's money to marry you, you need to prove your love. Julie says, okay. I got you. Now her, her man turns around and he says, if you do this, 
I will know you love me and I will marry you. Now at this point, he's thinking she's gonna look him dead in the face and be like, boy, you crazy. I would. He says, if you love me and you wanna get married, I need you to go on the roof naked and stand there until the sun comes up. Now keep in mind, it's December. Not only is it December, in New Orleans on that night, it was the coldest night of December. It was raining, it was sleeting. So he's expecting her to be like, uh, yeah, I don't love you that much. I would. I would 1000% turn and be like, I never said I love you that much. So that's what he's expecting Julie to do. That's not what Julie does. But we digress. So the night goes on and they're cuddled up by the fire, staying nice and cozy in each other's arms. And Julie's thinking about it and she's thinking and she's thinking and she's like, okay, well, if I do this, he'll marry me. Meanwhile, he's not thinking about it at all. He's like, all right, she ain't gonna do it. She ain't gonna do it. It's cold. She's not gonna do it. So a friend of his actually ends up joining them for drinks and chess. And him and his friend are drinking, playing chess. Julie goes to bed. She goes, she tells him good night. She changes into her nightgown. Keep in mind, it's the 1800s, they wore gowns. They didn't just sleep in a t-shirt and underwear like most of us do now. No, just me. Okay, it's okay. Anyway, um, so he continues spending time with his friend. They're drinking, they're having a grand old time. And it's almost dawn. And he's like, all right, bro, I've had enough. I'm gonna go to bed. Thanks for coming. At this point, this boy drunk drunk. Like he drunk. No if, ands, or uh, No if, or ands, or but about it. He is drunk. So he goes to bed and he curls up in bed with what he thought was Julie. And then he wakes up in the morning. So a homeboy went to bed drunk, right? Wakes up in the morning. Rolls over to say good morning to his lovely mistress. And guess who is not in bed with him? What'd you guess? Well, he looks around the room Keep in mind, he went to bed drunk, so I mean, it's highly likely that Miss Julie just woke up early and is dressed and in the living room waiting, right? He gets up and sees her nightgown balled up on the floor. Now, back in this day, that is extremely unlikely to be a thing uh, between maids and all that jazz to wake up and find a nightgown balled up on the floor is extremely unlikely because i mean in all honesty he pays for all these fine clothes and silks and everything she's not gonna leave her fine clothes on the floor okay so he goes to look for her. she's not in the house then he remembers the deal that he made. Keep in mind, it was the coldest night in December. It was raining, it was sleeting, and his heart sank. He let out a cry, and he goes to the roof, where he finds Julie's body curled up in a ball, frozen to death. Okay, so, 
Julie actually had frozen to death, uh, trying to prove her love to her man. We're gonna use the Frozen 2 lipstick. And building still stands and has been broken up into a shop as well as apartment buildings. Well, apartments. Kind of hard to be apartment buildings when it's one building. But. It is said by people who have lived there that on the coldest nights of December, you can see a naked ghost walking on the roof, shivering, um, holding herself as the wind will fl flies by. It is also said that once the sun starts to come up and colors shift in the sky for sunrise, she disappears. Now that's only on the coldest nights of December, which is when she died. There's also stories from people that work at the bottom of the cup tea room. Now the bottom of the cup tea room is a little shop. I don't know if you've heard of like reading tea leaves, uh, but when you like you bottom of a teacup it's like you read tea leaves and it's supposed to be I tell you past future things i i don't know i've never been there and i've never done it i'm actually kind of curious though so employees that work in the shop have said that they have heard random tapping that can't be explained they have heard footsteps and they have actually seen her ghost rounding the corner. So it is believed that Miss Julie, the Octoroon mistress of 734 Royal Street, put the building here again, um, it is believed that because she died there, her spirit never left. That would make sense because she died there trying to prove her love so he would marry her and I mean keep in mind he never thought she would do it and if he did really think she would do it then that's just a horrible freaking thing I think when he said it I think a part of him didn't think she would do it and if she did do it she would chicken out because I mean it was cold it was raining it was sleeting so it is believed that her spirit is stuck there because she has unfinished business I mean <laughs> You would do, especially if you would just like froze to death to prove your love. But unfortunately, there is no last names, um, and this is just this is because there are no names, and because this happened in the 1800s. There is it's a hundred percent possible that this is just a legend um that goes with the unexplained happenings of 734 rural street 100 percent possible but i mean i'm not gonna say it's unlikely especially if she has been seen on the roof shivering naked i hope you guys enjoyed story time um we did try a few new products i actually really like them we tried the elf putty blush which I actually really like uh, it has a nice pigment nice finish it's subtle it's buildable it works well with the morphe foundation we did the Too Faced highlighting drops we did it all over I actually really like the finish of my face I have my hands through my little this is a polo. It's not meant for that. But, you know, there's a hole there, so I'm going to live my best life and do it. Um, I actually, But I do really enjoy how my foundation actually looks right now. I'm not going to lie. I was a little concerned because those highlighting drops are very glittery. But 
in combination with the foundation and the elf light pink halo setting powder i think this is honestly i think this is quite possibly the best my foundations ever looked um the foundation i'm using is still the new morphe foundation the filter effect I'm not gonna lie, I think I'm in love with that foundation, y'all. Seriously, it's, it has been my go-to, like nonstop since I bought it. And it's actually very affordable. It's like $20. Um, the e.l.f. brightening or light pink halo setting powder. I really do like it for setting my all over face. Um, I was hoping for translucent. But my Walmart didn't have translucent. They only had the, the lightest shade that would work with me was the light pink. And I do actually really like it. I would like to try. Um, they have an under eye setting powder that I really want to try. But I mean, my Morphe brightening pink setting powder is probably going to remain my go to unless I can find something better. Uh, the Tardiest Remix Lip Gloss. I have tried a lot of their lip glosses. I I like them all. This is the shade Remix. Uh, this is... It's a, it's a stunning shade. And... I think that's all new we tried. Yep. I really like my foundation. I'm not gonna lie. I really think this is my favorite finished a foundation look it I mean you can tell I'm wearing makeup but it's like a nice satin natural finish I I'm discovering the more I do makeup the less I like the matter finishes and then obviously I've been using the priming oil like it's nobody's business i I don't think I'm ever going to go back primer wise. I think that's going to be my go to primer for like all eternity. I will say I have stopped using it on my nose though because my nose is a little bit oily. Um, so what I'll do is I'll do the priming oil and then I'll spritz myself with the Smashbox primer water. Uh, and then I'll do my foundation. And I really like the finished product right now. Like this is she on point. All right, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this story. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I took some of a subscriber's suggestions. The suggestions. And I tried to give y'all actual pinpoints of where the place is. Unfortunately, because there is a very likely possibility that this is a legend... I could not get photos of Julie or her lover, but I do have photos of where it is and what the building looks like as well as bottom of the cup tea room. So if you're ever in New Orleans, make sure you hit up bottom of the cup tea room. Support local guys. Support local, especially during a pandemic when local businesses are really struggling. Make sure you support local. Um, but yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed story time. Next Wednesday, we have a whole new story. Now that I have a better time frame, I will be able to go back to uploading two days a week because this was a whole different story that I myself did not find um, that was found in a book. Um, it was much more difficult to actually research and I spent a lot of time trying to find photos of Julie and her lover or even a last name but unfortunately that did not work out in my favor but we have some fun stories coming up so make sure you subscribe make sure you hit the notification bell and I will see you tomorrow for skincare Saturday bye guys